All right, hey, and what is up, guys? Sean back with Tech Ninjas here. One of our very first videos, uh, other than the introduction, this is going to be about the Drobo Mini. Now, some of you may already off the cuff be wondering, what in the world is a Drobo? Um, actually, I, I uh, suggested doing this video to a few other people, and that was their first reaction was, what is a Drobo? I have no idea what that is. I've never heard of them before. Um, so Drobo is actually a... Um, it's a company. It's actually also the name of their product, uh, much like Apple. Um, basically, it is this little box here is the Drobo Mini. Now that comes in several different forms. There's the Drobo N, the Drobo 5D. There's there's there, there's more business class solutions. This one's more for the home user, the regular. You know, so if you do a lot of video editing, photo editing. Um, things with very very large files you consume a lot of media you're gonna want one of these and basically all it does uh, it's a little box maybe no bigger than a uh, I don't know maybe a textbook maybe it's about as heavy as one um, basically this little front latch comes off here uh, it's actually magnetic so it does kind of clip on it just just you know you let it go and it just kind of leaves there and basically you can put in up to four, two and a quarter. Uh, these are laptop hard drives. So the little thin guys, uh, you can put up to four of these in here. Um, and when you do that, now these are all terabyte drives and that means that there's a thousand gigs of storage, give or take, on each one of these drives. Um, so with four of them collectively in here, you would have four terabytes of storage. Um, which I use for photo editing, video editing. This video is going to go on, well, not this one anymore because I'm getting rid of it here in, uh, in a little bit, but uh, it can go on here and you can work from it. It's a mass storage device. Um, so if, like I said, the reason you'd want one is if you're photo editing, video editing, things like that, um, you could use this. Uh, it's a way to keep your files in check instead of having, uh, you know, to uh, several hard drives just kind of in your desktop and they're all separate, you know, because if you just put them in your desktop as is, if you just hook them all up with SATA cables and whatnot, they're going to come up as four different drives. With this, this guy uses software uh, manipulation and it basically combines all of them together into one giant drive. Now, the beauty of Drobo and what makes them so special, because you can put four hard drives. I can put those four hard drives in my computer right now and combine them together through uh, Windows and make do basically exactly what this is doing. But their niche is that um, it will basically do this all automatically for you. So as soon as you plug in the hard drives, it will, without your intervention, it will already start configuring the drives, optimizing them for speed and for things like that. Um, so that way you can access your files quickly and you don't have to know how to do it or what's happening. You can just plug them in and you can go. And that's really nice for someone who doesn't maybe know about a lot about the technology. They just know they want the end goal of their quick file access, um, you know, the redundancy and things like that, but they don't know how to do it. That's exactly what this is for. Um, so basically, the default configuration of a Drobo Mini, now I'm not exactly sure about the other Drobo products that they offer, the default configuration for a Drobo Mini is uh, the fact that it will, um, so if you put all four hard drives in here, it will technically use one of the drives as uh, parity. And all that means is that you will have collectively, you know, so for example, I had four one terabyte hard drives in here. Now, normal math, one plus one plus one plus one is four. What the Drobo does is it basically utilizes one of the drives and it does this automatically through software and things like that and calculations. It does, it takes one of the drives and it will use it for parity. And all that means is that it will, basically this does a, a sort of mirroring. It, it keeps your files kind of separated between all four drives so that way if you lose a drive your data isn't gone. The price on these guys is actually not it's not as bad as their business class products. Their business class products I believe started about six hundred dollars and go up like extremely. I'm talking six hundred for the basic model. This guy here I believe right now brand new on Amazon 
uh, is five hundred no three hundred and fifty dollars I believe or three sixty and I I could be wrong and I'll, I'll post the link to this on Amazon below that's where I got mine um, you can buy them used I recommend it that's what I did and I saved a lot of money I think I got this guy for about two thirty and it was in perfect working condition the hard drives will set you back more money. Um, I believe each one of those hard drives there were about $70 when I purchased them. So overall, I mean, it's not going to be a cheap investment. But if technically, if you're looking into something like this, you've got a little money to spare or it, or it would cost you more money if you lost the files and didn't have any way of backing them up. Now, this does not, and I repeat, this does not constitute as a backup solution. So even though I was using this for quick access, uh, things that I needed very, very quick, uh, uh, you know, um, write speeds to uh, because I was doing Adobe and things like that. Um, Premiere, Photoshop, um, basically files. I was using emulators on here. Basically files you want to have access to almost as immediate as a plug-in hard drive. Um, this, even though it does do the RAID type distributing with the parity like I talked earlier, does not constitute as a physical backup. I actually also mirrored everything that was on this drive. I actually mirror it over to a server I have down here that you can't actually see, but it's below it's below my desktop. Um, and that is a file server I have, and that is its entire goal is to just hold things and for mass storage and archiving. Everything that was on here, every time my computer boots up, you may have actually seen it in the introduction. There's a little script that runs over here on one of these windows. That, every time I boot my computer, it is copying everything on here onto my file server. So that way I always have whatever I put on here, I have it there. Because just because a, a hard drive goes bad, you know, yes, you're safe for now. And you'll see in the videos here, um, you can see how it, you know, when you actually lose a drive. So if I take the uh, laptop drive out now, um, it will actually start to blink red. And then... Um, basically go crazy, it'll give you a bunch of prompts and say that, you know, uh, data, it'll say something about data has degraded, and all that means is that you've lost a drive, and now it has to basically, it's mad, because now it has to reconfigure and use the parity drive we talked about earlier to try and reconstruct the files on the drive that you lost. It has to figure out what you lost and what's still there, and then basically do some calculations to fill in the missing pieces, um, is essentially what it has to do. Um, so basically it'll complain for a little bit. Um, the the uh, repair process on one of these, um, when it, you do lose a drive, um, you can give or take about an hour or more depending on the size of the drives and the amount of data that was on the drive that was lost or you know that you just happened to click the button out of. Um, so it, it, yeah, in this, in this demonstration I think it, it's telling me about an hour which is, you know, relatively quick um, in this type of process because if you have any experience with RAID arrays, building, rebuilding a RAID array, RAID array is an extremely long process um, that is not fun in the least. Um, but all in all, this product, I highly recommend it. On the back, I did show it earlier, um, you've got a USB 3.0. So on the back, you've got a USB 3.0, you've got the power plug uh, there, the USB 3.0, you've got the power button. Um, now, one thing to note is that the lock, uh, the power actually has a locking feature, um, which I don't know if I can get on here, but you actually turn it, when you plug it in, you then twist it to the left, and it actually locks in place. So if somebody bumps the power cable, it won't just pull out immediately, which is really nice. Um, you've got two Thunderbolt connections, um, just in case you want to use them with a Mac, um, but it is also Windows compatible, so you do have a USB 3.0 port as well. Uh, on the side, you've got a Kensington lock. Um, if you use that on the front, like I said, if I put the, the Drobo guy back, uh, you've got this little magnetic plate that kind of locks into place, which is really nice. It has the Drobo logo on the front. Um, you've got little uh, power uh, yeah, I'm sorry, that's activity light. That's an activity light there. You've got power light on the other side, and then all four corners of these actually light up to show you the individual drives. So if you have drives in this bay, this bay, and this bay, only those three lights are lit up, and this bottom corner light here will not light up, which is really neat, especially if one of the drives goes bad. You can see the status of the hard drives at a glance. 
So if this hard drive, if it, de if it detects that something has gone wrong with that bay, um, if that bay right there, the LED status indicator around here will actually turn yellow for warning and then red if something has severely gone wrong, which is really nice. And then on the other side, we've got nothing. And like I said, on the bottom, you do have that MSATA slot uh, if you want to increase the access to your small files and things like that. Um, it does have these little rubber feet at the bottom along with ventilation holes. Um, I do recommend if you do get this model, um, it also has, I believe, ventilation holes in the back. Yeah, those are two little mini fans in there. Um, I do recommend that the feet are not that big. Um, so I do recommend, I actually had it on these little, these little nubs. Um, so that way it would actually keep it elevated off of the wood plank that I had it on, a little wood shelf um, I've constructed. So that way it keeps ample airflow. airflow. If you don't, the unit does kind of tend to overheat a little bit. Um, which is probably not the fault of this guy, you know, it, it's just the way these are designed. Hard drives put out a lot of heat by default. Um, but that's about it. Uh, like I said, overall, this thing was exactly what I needed at the time. Um, I didn't really understand RAID or hard drive sizes or anything like that um, enough to, to comfortably do it myself. So this does it for you. Like I said, it, it was automatic, it was plug and play. Um, you put the hard drives in, they can be different size drives and they can be different manufacturers, which is also a plus. With regular RAID, you're really not supposed to do that. Um, some configurations might not even work at all if you use too many different size drives. Um, generally, the rule of thumb is that you're supposed to use the same manufacturer, the same size hard drive. This guy, you don't have to do that. This guy expects that you are going to use quick and dirty methods to get data on and off of here so it knows how to um, interface with most hard drives and different sizes which is awesome and then it'll combine them all together and like I said your, your actual size um, your actual uh, hard drive or available hard drive space will vary uh, like your mileage will vary on this uh, item because like I said, it's doing that parity calculation, so it's, you're not going to have the full, if you have, you know, four one gig hard drives, you're not going to have all four gigs. Um, at best, you're going to have 3.8 something uh, because of the calculation of drives and the, the file system and stuff like that. And then with this guy, I believe with four drives, with one drive for parity, I had about, I think just three, maybe a little less than three. At about 2.8 gigs of space, or I'm sorry, terabytes of space, excuse me. Um, so that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. But hey guys, this has been my review of the Drobo Mini. Sorry if I've been doing this a lot. Uh, bad habit, and I'll probably have to stop holding the products in the future. But uh, this has been the very first review video uh, on the Drobo Mini. Um, I give it two thumbs up. Like I said, it was definitely worth it for the uh, hard drive requirements that I needed for the, for the data uh, retention that I needed and the backup capability and stuff like that. Um, so, but anyway, that's been, uh, that's been it for this one. I am Sean with, uh, with Tech Ninjas and we will see you guys in the next one. Feel free to comment on the, uh, on the video below. Let me know, uh, how I did and how much I stuttered and things like that. But, uh, yeah, feel free to comment. Uh, do you use a Drobo at home? Do you, do you, uh, do you possibly have one of the bigger ones, the 5D or maybe the 5N? Um, and how do you like it? Is it something that you use? Uh, would you recommend it to other people? Um, and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.